Hello everyone. Welcome to Spring Boot tutorial series by JR Academy and uh, thanks for joining again. So in last tutorials we have seen S2 database with JDBC template and uh, we understood data source as to console and we have learned uh, how to initialize database and we did perform CRUD operations through APIs. And we have seen many important topics along with this series. So if you haven't watched my previous tutorial, so I recommend go back and watching them because uh, this topic will help you to understand Spring from uh, uh, scratch and uh, those are really very Im uh, important topics. So moving forward, this is the tutorial for S2 with uh, Spring Data JPA. So let's get started. In this tutorial, we will perform CRUD operations with uh, Spring Data JPA and uh, we will cover a few advanced uh, topics related to uh, JPA and uh, implementing data access layer of any application has always been complicated with uh, too much uh, boilerplate code and uh, this spring data JPA will try will reduce our uh, efforts for this boilerplate code and to demonstrate that we're gonna need a project so you can use your old project or you can create a new project and add a spring data dependency in it so what I'm gonna do is I'm I, I'll create a new project I'm going to my browser and here I am going start dot spring dot io and here I am doing JPA and then uh, test JPA and uh, I'm gonna add web dependency then add JPA dependency then add s2 dependency let me generate it and file open project with file system and directory then download and test JPA so if you go here and see our pom.xml file you can see we have uh, jpa dependency and uh, in our s2 dependency just remove this scope Control f and uh, first thing we need to do is we need to enable our s2 console same like in last time we did right so uh, i'm going to my resource folder then application.properties and here spring s2 and console enable true so let me start this application one time so to make sure everything is fine our application started and let me go to my browser again and here if i do s2 console i can see this local host then s2 console let me connect this so yeah everything is perfect for now so uh, first we need to set up basic things such as controller service and repositories so what i'm going to do is i'll copy our uh, controller service and repository from our previous tutorial so uh, we don't waste much time and I'll come back quickly. So uh, what I did is I resolve all the issues and I copy and paste all the controller service and repositories in our new folder, a new project from our previous project. So uh, before jumping into JPA CRUD uh, operations, we need to understand few things. So first, uh, we need to know that JPA is an API and uh, we need to provide an implementation of that. So how we can provide this implementation and we know that there are a couple of imp implementations such as Hibernate, Open JPA and Eclipse Link and stuff like that. Uh, thing is, in case of Spring, we used to specify this uh, Hibernate and stuff in XML file and we used to add a jar files in it but in case of Spring Boot this Spring Data JPA comes with uh, Hibernate as a default implementation and uh, we can exclude this Hibernate and uh, we can add other implementation of our choice if we want to but for now let it be the Hibernate and uh, another thing we need to know is the entity word this term entity is the meaning of this term entity is in persistent domain object so each entity class generally represent a single database table so thing is uh, for example we have an employee table in our uh, database then we need to create a class which we call we're gonna call it entity class with name employee and we will specify all the fields of the database in the class and uh, each row of the table will represent by the instance of this uh, instance of this entity class so let's say we have 10 entries in our data uh, employee table then we need to create 10 instances of employee entity class to hold the data of that. So let's create this entity class. So for that, if you remember in our previous tutorial, we created this employee table and we're going to use the same. So it is very too easy to create this employee table. And uh, for that, we just need to use annotation entity here. And uh, let me import this 
and uh, another annotation is a table so uh, this is i need to specify name here so let me do something like this name equals employee so basically we are telling jpa that this is the entity class for table name employee so every time jp encounters a jpa will know that an employee table will have five fields id first name last name address and joining date so in jpa we have so many important annotations so i will keep telling them and using them but i suggest to make a list of them and jot them down for your future references and uh, moving ahead uh, we need to tell uh, unique uh, uniqueness of this entity so thing is if you remember we have primary key in our table so here we need to specify that and this id is our primary key so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use another annotation such as id which is java express instance annotation and so this annotation specify that this id will be unique for any instance and we need to give them another thing because if you remember in last tutorial our id was this id was a auto increment it should be increment automatic so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use our another annotation name generated and generated value and inside that if i do control and space i can see the possible values and i can and uh, higher i need to specify identity so uh, we tell uh, we basically we are telling jpa to increment this id automatic now let me stop this and stop the server and restart the server again okay so everything is perfect and uh, if i go to my browser and uh, let me refresh this so if you see here it created this employee table with name first underscore name joining underscore date and last underscore name like that so but uh, we didn't specify any any if i go in my resource folder we didn't specify any schema.sql or data.sql file here so how it will created uh, it created the table in it so thing is every time we specify any entity at the application startup uh, hibernate will fire some queries automatic based on that entity class and initialize the database so um, if you want to see which queries hibernate is firing you can go to your application file and you can do something like this spring dot jpa and then show sql true and let me restart this so now in our console if you want to see you can see here it is firing two queries first it is dropping the table and then it is restart it is uh, uh, creating the table again so but look at the name here uh, look at the fields here so we have id which is integer that we specified and it is generated by default right then we have address which is variable character and 255 is the limit and then look at this name first underscore name so what is happening here is we specify in our uh, employee entity class that uh, first name and this one first name is our um, camel case so it is separating camel case with underscore and uh, this by default if i select string here by default it will choose variable character and it will put 255 character limit so uh, let's say if i i don't want this first name name i want to change this name so now uh, i can use another annotation here name column and if i do this uh, control and space i can see all the possible options that i have so let's say i want to change the name so i can change name here from this name and then if i do control space again i have another option called nullable so if i do true here and so this if i do true with nullable that means this uh, first name cannot be null and then if i do this length and if i put thousand uh, and uh, let me stop this and restart this so look at this query that uh, hibernate fired so if you see here we have a name instead of first name and we have thousand characters instead of uh, instead of 255 and i put nullable true actually i needed to put nullable false instead of true and let me restart again so if you see here it added this not null keyword here that means this field cannot be null it will be variable character and thousand so that's how we can set up everything
so now question is who is creating these queries uh, because someone needs to create this query and this query should be uh, aligned with uh, data, uh, database because uh, if you remember i told you that uh, uh, database supports different sql version and uh, let's say i want to use oracle then how this query will be generated right so uh, there is something called dialect with hibernate and if you see here we have this dialect and it is using s2 dialect so this dialect is deciding which sql generator to use you can use uh, so uh, if every time we change our database we need to specify this dialect and based on this dialect hibernate will choose particular sql generator and it will create queries based on that particular uh, sql version or that sql generator so moving forward I, I said that by default it uh, hibernate will do this initialization process but let's say i don't want to uh, use this uh, uh, default initialization instead i want to use my own so uh, you want to use your schema.sql right so here you can turn it off this feature you can do spring then we have jpa then we have hibernate ddl auto and you can do none here so now you can put your schema and data.sql file in your resource folder let me add those two files here quickly and i'll come back so what i did is i add these two files here from our previous project and i add some additional data here instead of so previously we had only this batman but i add a couple of more uh, dc comic uh, characters here as uh, our default employees and uh, let me save this let me stop this server and let me restart this if you see here we have employee with all our uh, default things and if i do run I have this 10 employees which is coming from that SQL file but if you see here I don't see any queries because we turn off that feature from uh, this our application uh, application.properties file.